open road. It's much the same story near any big town, and not only at weekends. With half a million new cars appearing every year, there are times when Britain looks like becoming one vast traffic jam. Why, you even get cars using the roads without drivers. Ever tried to pass one of these chaps on a narrow road? years ago, the Romans built this road. Today it's part of A5, but it's still known as Watling Street. And it's still not wide enough. Look what happens when you get to St Albans on your way north from London. So the St Albans bypass is being built to relieve the congestion. And this bypass will be linked with a new road stretching from Luton to Rugby the first half of the London to Yorkshire motorway. This is one of the biggest of Britain's new road building schemes. 55 miles long, it will be completed in the record time of 19 months. The world's most up-to-date road building machinery and a labor force of 4,000 men are engaged on this huge operation. The work is controlled by radio through seven shortwave stations. thousand men to be housed and fed. There are canteens every two miles along the stretch and mobile canteens as well. We may be slow starters but once we start we move. The work goes on day and night in all weathers rain or shine. Here at Newport Pagnall the halfway house the work is nearing completion. Enormous concrete mixers are at it 24 hours a day. Mechanical shovels prepare the surface for pouring on the concrete. Pumps are rigged, ready to pump the concrete to wherever it's wanted. Bridging is a vital factor. At Newport Pagnell, for instance, they have to bridge the River Ouse. But the bridge over the Ouse is only one of 132 bridges. Some of them flyovers, some of them underpasses, that the new motorway will need. Before the job is done, seven million gallons of liquid fuel of one sort or another will have been used. Men of all colors and creeds from all over the Commonwealth are helping to build this great new motorway. To enable stores and supplies to be brought up, 17 miles of service roads have had to be built or repaired. Electricity and water supplies have had to be diverted and many side roads have been widened and strengthened so that extra wide lorries can reach the sites. Keeping track of what's happening can best be done from the air. By helicopter, checks can be made all along the route in a matter of hours. Now here's the engineer in charge of it all, John Mickey. Did the Romans have as tough a job, Mr. Mickey? I don't think the Romans had it quite as tough. After all, they didn't have to build 55 miles in 19 months. How long do you think your road will last? Well, many, many years. More years than probably I shall be on this earth. Here is Britain's first motorway, the Preston Bypass, which cost four million pounds. It's the shape of things to come all over the country motor roads which will be confined to high-speed motor traffic with drivers subject to special rules laid down in the motorway code. But there are other kinds of work going on to get the traffic moving. Here is the old transporter bridge across the Manchester Ship Canal. The old ferry's had her day. She can't cope with the volume of traffic now. So a new bridge from Runcorn in Cheshire to Widnes in Lancashire is being built to replace the old transporter. It will have the largest arch span in Britain and will cost two million pounds. It will bridge both the Ship Canal and the River Mersey. Over here on the Runcorn side, 
The supporting pillars have been built right in the midst of the houses and the bridge itself will fly over the roads and the chimney pots. It's much the same on the witness side. Soon another bottleneck in the heart of industrial England will have been ironed out. Congestion slows traffic in some towns to no more than eight miles an hour. All sorts of loads go by road, even the church steeple. But it's not only on the highways that the planners are busy. For instance, here at Marble Arch, one of London's bottlenecks, a vast new scheme is projected. Here is a model of the marble arch of the future. Hyde Park Corner has long been a black spot for traffic congestion in London, and nothing less than a complete replanning of the whole area will solve the problem. There's a scheme for this too and this model shows what it will look like. It includes an underpass, such as those which have been in use for years in Paris. Here's a London bottleneck where work is well underway. It's the Elephant and Castle, gateway to the south and southeast of England, where the tavern which gave the area its name has had to make way for the roadway. One of the most spectacular of the new roadworks is the Chiswick flyover which will carry traffic from the heart of London straight onto the Great West Road and speed up the journey to London Airport. On the continent, of course, they've had specially built motor roads for years, and Britain, though a late starter, has been able to draw on the experience of other countries. But the Roads Campaign Council wants to see the problem in Britain tackled with considerably greater vigour. This is the sort of thing that they've done in Belgium. In Britain, we don't have to provide only for our own road users. We have one of the largest tourist trades in the world, and cars from abroad arrive by sea and air in their thousands. The car ferry docking at Dover provides its daily quota. Coaches, cars and still more cars. And these are only a few of those which arrive in England every day. Each year the number increases. Cars from all over the world. Cars to explore the leafy English lanes, the Welsh valleys, the Scottish uplands. So not before time, it's go ahead on the roads.